my name is Tim Power. Uh, I'm an architect designer. I live in Milan, Italy. Uh, American born, American trained, Italy raised. Probably not. In fact, it has a different function. It's all about connecting people. So uh, I suppose connecting people can be as hip or non hip as whatever the designer decides. Or, but the larger systems, as things get larger, unfortunately, all the hip people are designing small things. So uh, I think it's a real challenge to, for all of us as designers and architects to work towards bigger systems, to look at bigger systems and get away from only designing the small hip things and making larger systems human and hip as well. Going back to the idea of needing actually to take the same mentality and the same energy that we're all putting into small things and bringing them into a, a larger systematic approach is, is the next challenge. Not going to be easy, but I think it's um, for the longest time now, designers have been concentrating on small things because it's, that's where our hands touch and that's where our, our bodies touch and that's where we, we interact um, on a day-to-day -day basis. But I think we've really missed a lot of challenges and missed a lot of opportunities to have that same energy and that same sexiness, if you will, or that same uh, level of desire on a bigger scale. And we shouldn't be leaving all those bigger scale issues to engineers um, and they shouldn't be leaving it to themselves either. It shouldn't be politicians and engineers deciding big issues. It should be the, the, the creative people who have been concentrating on the small things, also integrating into the larger questions. Probably the, the way to give the city back to people is to make people realize that the city is not just a place only of mixing ideas and commerce, but it's also a place where children are, are raised, children go to school, uh, rivers need to be poured back into the city, uh, coastlines need to be protected, uh, forests and gardens need to be designed for people. Um, all these things about what the cities were in the, in the end of the 18th century need to be brought into the 20th century. I mean, the idea of just bigger places for more uh, economic growth is uh, kind of an old-fashioned idea. I think cities are not only about bigger places for economic growth, it's all about, it's all about inhabiting our, our environment and taking back what's rightfully ours, I suppose and taking care of it in the end. If, but in, until we believe it's ours, until we make it ours, um, it's going to be impossible to do. I think it might be interesting also to think about how amplification of, of life as well as uh, quiet places in a city, um, places where people can, can retract from the day-to-day -day, day, uh, amplification, mixing uh, different levels of, of uh, all of these different atmospheres need to be addressed. Um, cities are all about amplification, so I think it's uh, part of what cities do. How can cities, how can cities be fine-tuned and how can the, 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 the atmospheres of cities be uh, taken care of by people who live there is probably a better question that we need to address. People come to cities to integrate, to discuss ideas, of course, commerce is part of it as well, commerce and trade. But cultural, the, what cultural life is all about now, it's not only about museums, of course. It's not only about uh, um, places, uh, specific places about culture, but it's street culture, underground culture, uh, natural culture, ecological culture, museum, musical culture, all these sort of things that people uh, spend their time working on. Uh, can be part of the city, and can be part of the country, can be part of uh, different kinds of environments. But yeah, I, I think uh, what people are in cities for is that mix of culture. Uh, memes spread in the city as they do in the virtual world, they spread in the physical world um, through people. Um, the fact that you have so many people together in a city is. Uh, I, I was thinking the other day, we used to talk about, the, back in the 80s, there was a lot of talk about the walkable city. And now uh, my students and young people working in my studio don't really remember those days. They're, now for them, a community is all about Facebook and all about uh, more electronic cities. Um, so their memes spread really quickly through the Facebook world or through the electronic world. Um, but that energy and those ideas spread as quickly through uh, the physical world, the physical urban world. 
city is all about narration, all about uh, uh, stories happening on a, on a micro level. Going back again to what, what I think needs to happen for all of us as creative people, we need to take our small stories and make them part of a bigger, a bigger narrative, a bigger picture. Um, every time we try, uh, in today's world, the smaller creative people, let's, let's talk about designers and architects, to bring our stories to a larger picture, to the more political stage or larger economic stage, um, there's, there's been a bit of uh, backlash against the politicians to have the small uh, stories told through a larger political picture. But I think, I think uh, what's, what we've seen recently in some political uh, changes in America, my, my country, is uh, show that small, small stories can become big stories. The idea of returning to, to what, what you talk about of uh, integrating life and work into one complete package will, will never really exist, nor will we go back to the pre-existing economic situation of 10 years ago. But I think that's all the better. Now we have so many opportunities to get rid of all that bad, uh, bad economic policy and, and bad social policies of years past, and actually take advantage of this crisis and, and, and move forward and, and not only integrate our work and our playing, um, but probably play a bit more and make sure our work is a bit uh, more interesting and make sure that whatever money we do make is spent on the right things and not the wrong things, that we're not all making money to buy the, buy the things that made the current situation as it is. Um. Indeed, unfortunately, at the moment, a lot of what we're doing as designers, as architects, as urbanists, as filmmakers, as documentaries, as uh, branding experts, as uh, of course greed is part of what we do, but I would hope that there's generosity involved in all of our actions as well. I think once again, I think this new, this new period which is coming um, to fruition gives us many opportunities to use, to be more generous and, uh, and to make money in the meantime. I don't envision a skyline of tomorrow. I think probably a lot of these skyscrapers and the skyline of a city will probably be flattened. Um, it will no longer be peaks. It will probably become return to the horizon, the, the horizon line. Um, not so much the skyline. It will be all about the natural landscape. Um, probably there will be buildings which, and cities and environments which look more naturalistic. Mountains uh, instead of buildings, um, skylines instead of, uh, excuse me, horizon lines instead of uh, small little buildings.